Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today I'm getting back on the TS250. It's behind me. I'll take you around and look at it here in a minute. Uh, what we're gonna work on today is the seat pan. This one is in pretty rough shape, but I think we can save it. So let me show you what I'm doing here. Okay. As you can see, pretty rough. And this particular one, well, actually all of them are that way. Uh, the side the kickstand's on is usually the worst because all the water runs over there. So that's where we're at on this one too. This whole area along here is gonna have to be re replaced. Uh, for the most part, the back, the other side, and most of the front. I'll have to do a little bit of repair up here. And a uh, little bit here in the middle, around this hole and right here where, the, where it's perforated. And then the rest of it, we can put uh, pour 15 on this and that will keep it from rusting any further. Uh, the, under, the underside is in pretty good shape except for that area right there and right here. So, and even on this one, all but one of the, the teeth that holds the uh, seat cover on, uh, the only one I see is this one here that's broken off. Oops, no, there's a couple of them up here. You got two up here. So I'll have to try to make the teeth and uh, other than that, it's just gonna be pretty much replacing this side and a couple of holes here in the middle. Other than that, it's, it's pretty, pretty uh, substantial yet. Okay, let's go over and take a, take a look at the bike. Uh, I've got a appointment next week, hopefully with uh, the gentleman to put the stripes on. So that will be uh, coming up and probably another issue of uh, this bike. Uh, it's getting pretty close to being put together. I had a couple holes here in the fender and I guess they really didn't belong there. Somebody must have drilled them. <clears throat> I didn't realize it until I'd already got it together. So I just put some plugs in them. Uh, both sides. I'm not sure what they had, but it's uh, you know I'm not going to take it apart, and weld up the holes, and repaint everything. So that's just not going to happen. I've got. I'm trying to piece together signal lights. I've got these two up here done. I still don't have an original headlight. I'm probably gonna have to use this one. I think this is a replacement uh, aftermarket type. Uh, if it works, fine. It's, uh, you know, I've, I found a, a, a body, although it's not very good, but it's just so hard to find the other components. And if the headlight in this one works, I'll go ahead and use this one. I'm not gonna be that fussy, I don't think. I've got one signal light here, and I actually had to, to find the uh, extension, this piece right here. Uh, I've got some shorter ones, I've got some longer ones, but I don't have another one like this. So I found some, so I bought those and they're on the way so I can fix some more as I get time. Uh, but I'll fix the one up and get it on here. So this one is getting pretty close. I, I do have all the wiring yet to do, uh, except for going down here to the, to the uh, magneto. Uh, that part I've already done. I did a video on that, but I've got to get the wiring harness out and it's pretty rough if I remember right, so there's gonna be a lot of wiring. 
but I am running out of parts for this one. Uh, you know, that's just the way it is. But anyhow, uh, we're going to get over here on the seat pan and uh, let me, let me get the cushion here. Hang on. You know, the, as with all these things, the, the cushion is not in all that great a shape either. Uh, I do have a new cover and uh, it's been in a bag for a long time so it's I've got it kind of stretching out here uh, as with probably most of them we'll have to add some material to the top and a little to the sides to uh, you know try to get our height back and add this piece here just so we don't uh, tear up the cover so we'll do whatever we need to do to get that done uh, new strap I guess this one had a strap I don't even know the other uh, uh, it had been replaced on it so it uh, it was not a factory unit to start with and nor is this one this one probably came from uh, eBay I've had it probably a year and a half or so <clears throat> anyhow that's where we're going next we're going to work on the C pan and see if we can get everything uh, uh, built back up for the seat and probably by the next time that we uh, do anything to this bike then we'll have the decals on and the seat on and we'll be probably into the wiring harness What I kind of like to do on this is do them a piece at a time, you know, maybe this much here and then this much and then this much. We can probably get this done in three pieces here on the side. That way you can maintain, it's easier to maintain the proper curve and thickness. So you can see here that this gets thinner when, as we go down and uh, this is actually where the hinges are right here. That's where that strap goes right there. So yes, it does take one, but that's what I like to do. It's just easier to maintain the, the proper curve and the thickness if you just kind of piece it together. And what you usually run into is when you've got one that's eat up this bad, you're gonna have some places that when you weld the new pieces in, it's gonna wanna blow a hole through it and you've just got to expect that and you're just gonna have to go back and fill a hole and then grind it back down. But you can make a good repair out of that. And like I said, once we get it all done, then we'll go back with uh, the POR15, that's P-O-R-15. It's a product that arrests rust and it, it doesn't allow it to, to uh, continue to rust. I've, al I've already taken this one and went through the bead blaster with it. So I've got most of the rust off, the scale anyway. So when you put that on, basically what it does is it seals it, takes the, uh, so the air can't get to it. And if the air can't get to it, then it can't rust. So let me get my tool set up and we're gonna start cutting this up. Okay, I'm just looking here. Looks like uh, the widest area is right here and it's just right at an inch. So I'm going to cut a strip about an inch and then I can hook it into right back here where I've got good material and run it as far as I can. Uh, and that way, you know, wherever I stop, then I'll be able to take my grinder after I weld it in and trim it back to about the same as it is now. Uh, I've got a piece of uh, sheet metal here that I'm going to use and I'm going to just cut a, an inch wide piece and uh, you know you just kind of you weld it in then you fit it and uh, trim off whatever you don't need. So an inch should give us a good, 
I don't know whether I'll be able to cut this the whole length here or not. We'll see. It's getting kind of narrow. Not a lot to hold on to anymore. All right. We'll go over to the shear and see if we can cut it. All right. I don't have a lot of room over here. But we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get this cut. What it's probably gonna want to do is flip up on me. Well, I was able to pull it off. Looks like, and the piece should be back here. Yeah, there we go. So I should be able to get most of it out of there. I may have to cut one more piece. All right, let's see here. I've got good material right here. So I'm gonna start right there. And that's where I'm gonna start my cut out. And you can't go all the way around because see the, the uh, the arch of the pan it it's not gonna it's not straight so it's gonna run down on you so uh, that's another reason why you just kind of piecemeal this thing so I'm gonna go to about here I think yeah right about there and then I'll be able to get back in and and finish uh, reposition my this other piece and go this way. I may make it in two pieces. It might take three. So let's get ready to cut that out. Shrink this a little bit to make that curve. And this, I, I just put it in here. Uh, I've got two different jaws. I've got an expanding jaw and a uh, shrinking jaw. And we're gonna actually shrink it here. And you'll see when I press this down that it will, it'll turn the metal like this. Just slightly. And I can move it down, give it a little more. See, you can see it's making a, a corner there. Let me see what it, how much more I need. A little bit more down here. Hopefully it'll be enough. All right, let me show you why I needed to do that. may have done it a little more than I needed to, but not much. So as I make this corner right here, it would have been, it would have been coming straight across here, which you could make that work. You just trim it. But since I've got the equipment, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And I guess what I need to do now is just start my my uh, weld down here, but I need to kind of trim this piece a little bit so that I can be in line with my cut. So I'll just grab a pair of tin snips and, and uh, trim that. You can 
can see here that I'm a lot thicker here than I need to be on this end, but I'll trim all that when I get it welded on. But I need most of this thickness down here. So that's, that's my whole reasoning behind everything. And we'll just kind of give this a little bend here to kind of get us going the same direction as the, as the seat. And we'll get our ground up here. I'm gonna use a MIG welder on this. It's, it's just a lot easier to, to deal with and then you can grind it after you get it hooked up. Okay, so we've got our tack there. And I'm gonna go ahead and tack it up here on the top. And you can see that we'll be, uh, we'll be burning through here. It, I haven't yet, but we will be. And you just kind of pull this down as you go and try to line it up with your, your parent material there. Yeah, not too bad. probably cut it off where we're going to terminate it at. Give it a mark there. Kind of in the angle that we need it to be done at. And just go in with a pair of 10 snips. And cut that. So we're pretty close, pretty close to what we need. Oops, I gotta get my ground back on. just go around here and and finish tacking everything all the way down the, the seam. The proper way to weld this, believe it or not, is kind of the the mud dauber or the the chicken poop type welds. Because if you try to do a continuous weld, this is I mean it's the same on when you're replacing panels on a car. You've got to do this, otherwise you will warp the metal or burn through if you're trying to do a continuous weld. So you just do a, a chicken poop type deal and when you get done, grind it flat. If you've been following the channel, you probably recall, I've, I've done a lot of repairs on these before and I even made one for the Bighorn Kawasaki uh, complete pan. So if you if you missed that one, go back and check it out. It was a it was a big deal, but I got it done and it looked great. And uh, just took a lot of work. I had a lot of people wanting me to make them seat pans, but I just have to charge so much for them because you know they're one-off pieces. No one would want them after you give them a price. 
but that's what you got to do and if you were actually uh, doing this on a car or a flat panel on something you would want to do do a couple here then move down do a couple here and then move down do a couple here so you would would not heat that area up but in the case of the seat pan it's not necessary you can do the uh, continuous uh, spot weld as you go along you're going to have to go back at times see there i burned through and uh, you just you just fill that hole that you burned through with with weld and so on and just keep keep doing that we've got a they had a kind of a cutout area here for whatever reason I'm not real sure here's here's another one here I, I guess it's because that's where the pan kind of bends maybe I don't know but anyhow we're gonna put it back in by just once we get it uh, spot welded on both sides of it then we can just take a hammer and put it back in. And then we'll just weld that up just like we did the rest of it. Once we get that in, we can take the piece that we cut off and see this is a, a good piece here. This is where that, where it didn't rust all the way to the bottom. So we know that that is our biggest spot. And then we, we all we have to do is just match up uh, each end of that, oops, right like that and right like this and just kind of draw a you know, kind of fill in the blank there. And that'll, that'll make it close enough. Something like that. And I'll try to trim that with my uh, shears here if I can. I'll probably have to get some of it with the grinder. Yeah, that's not gonna work there for me. Maybe on this end it will. So then we can just take our little grinder here. You get the idea. And now we'll cut out another piece from here to here. And then we'll patch that in. And you can, you know, once you get that uh, welded, then you can go ahead and level it out. that and you can also uh, trim up here whichever way you need to go on this too you can trim this up a little further if you need to and we will we'll probably come up closer to getting rid of the line you can't have too much 
uh, otherwise your seat cover may not fit. But the one thing, the reason we're doing this really is so we can put the uh, uh, edging on here to protect the seat cover when you fold it over. And so all the sharpness needs to go away and it just takes some time. Okay, I went back over to the, the shrinker and worked on this edge just a little bit so that we can get this to kind of follow the same line. It's a little bit high here, but once we get this tacked in, we can trim this and tr just trim it to fit the opening that we take out, that we take out of there. Okay, kind of got that side all done. Everything up here looks pretty good, so we just put in our new piece, which was the majority of that side. And like I say, that's to give us a place to put our, uh, our edging to protect the seat cover as it rolls around the edge and then hooks in with the, with the little teeth here. And up here on this end, the material actually looks pretty good. It's just that uh, one, two, let's see, two, I think, there, yeah, another one up here. I think I'm going to try to just make the teeth and weld them in. And then, uh, you know, they should, they should take it okay for one or two times uh, without breaking off again. Uh, but the material actually looks pretty good there. So other than that, I'm probably going to cut out this little square and this little square and put these back in. And of course, there is a hole here, but we just want to get rid of all the rat tatty looking stuff there. And you can see here that I, I blended in where these notches went right here. And you have them over here too. Uh, I think it has something to do with how they bend the, the pan. Uh, but anyhow, that's uh, once we get this uh, all the pieces in that we need to replace, then we'll just give it a good coat of pour 15 and it will it, it'll last forever then. So uh, my next goal, I guess here is to start cutting out these pieces and make some new teeth and weld into the front. Just cutting out the little teeth here now. I'm just taking a piece of metal and I'll just weld this over the top of this other one and uh, it should work just fine. And all that's all we're doing is just taking a pair of tin snips here and just making the, the little tooth and then we'll kind of bend it. Let's see, I think one, two, three. Get three of them. So we'll attach those and now we're, we're looking to cut these pieces out. It's just a lot of noise.
And this stuff doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you're just forming basically the way it was. It had this little raise here, so we're put, trying to put it back in the best we can. And uh, got another piece here, just about ready to go. Looks like I need to trim it out a little bit. It's just trimming and uh, welding. You just keep at it until you, until you're kind of happy with the contour you have. Okay, you can see our new our new tooth right there, right here, and right there. And we all we've got to do is bend those up a little bit, and they'll hook right into the the seat, and then you'll just bend them back over. So that's pretty much the repair. I've just got to get the sander out and sand it down a little bit. Doesn't need a lot here because the foam's gonna go there. It just needs whatever you want back here to make it look good when you uh, lift the seat up. And what I usually do is I'll sand this down pretty good, try to contour it, and then I'll put in some seam sealer so that you can't really even tell where the seam is. All right, got our patch pretty much all done. I'm going to put the drain hole back in. Just use a hole saw if you got one. And uh, we're back in there. We're about where it was. there was the hole so they're offset a little bit so that's pretty much our repair and just be sure to uh, uh, like up here where you've got a weld bead you need to grind that down so that your uh, your edging will fit over it because that's going to go all the way around to protect it, the cover from this edge and just take your 
grinder and, and soften that edge all the way around wherever you worked on it. And uh, see, there's our, there's the side. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna get the uh, pour 15 put on it and that'll take overnight to dry. And then, uh, then I'll come back with the seam sealer and seam seal everything here so you really can't tell too much about where the weld was. It doesn't look too bad now, but once you paint it uh, black, it'll show up. So just put a little seam sealer around it after the pour 15. And actually I can put it on here now uh, because it's, uh, I'm not gonna pour 15 this side. It'll just be the other side. So that's all we really got to do. There's, there's a few rust spots yet, but the integrity of the seat pan is more what we were questioning more than anything. That and the fact that we didn't want a sharp edge for the uh, cover to get torn on. So we've, by fixing these really rust root areas, we've put the integrity back in the pan and we've put a few new teeth in to hold the, the cover. And uh, this, this whole edge here uh, would have been a problem too. So we've got it all fixed. It's not that big a deal. For the most part, nobody's ever gonna see it. Uh, the only thing that you may wanna do is really try to clean up the bottom just so that uh, when you lift the lid uh, to access the battery or whatever, then you, uh, you can't see this big repair area. But most people won't care anyway. I'm actually just gonna use caulking. I think it'll work just fine. The, my uh, seam sealer is kind of stiff, so it would show more uh, brush strokes than this will, since I can just use my finger. And of course you will still see this, but it, uh, it won't look too bad. All right, now we'll turn it over and put the pour 15 on. And just, just paint it on. That's, it's, uh, I'm even gonna paint it on the, the uh, stuff that doesn't have rust on it. I, this one has uh, been hanging around for quite a while and I had to thin it to get it so I could brush it. So I just want to use it up. But it needs to go on reasonably thick. This is the product, Pour 15. And it will stop the rust but it's very slow drying, so you can forget about doing anything else to this today. Okay, one thing, actually I, I couldn't use it all up, so I'm gonna try to keep it. Uh, one thing you wanna do with this stuff is put a plastic bag between, or a, a piece of plastic between the can and the lid when you put it back on, something like this, because if you don't, you will never get it open again. This stuff, it's, it dries up so hard, you would have to cut the lid out up here. You'll never get it out of there. So do yourself a favor, put a little piece of plastic in there, and the next time you need it, it'll be, it'll be there and you can get the lid off. So, 
here's the whole seat pan all taken care of. And like I say, it's a, a very slow dry. Uh, probably, uh, I doubt if it'll even be uh, by this evening be dry and it's uh, noon now where I'm at. So uh, really, it's just gonna set here until tomorrow. I can't do anything till then anyway. So just don't get in a hurry with this stuff, but it is good stuff. So there you have it guys. Uh, save your old seat pan. You're not gonna find them. Uh, if you got a Yamaha, uh, KDI Industries, uh, he uh, repops, I think the, the 250, the 360, the 125 and the 175 pan, and maybe even the 90. But, and even has the foam. But when you're talking about a Suzuki or a Kawasaki, I don't know anybody that does it. If, uh, if somebody does, let me know. But uh, it's, it's something we all have to do eventually if we're, gonna, uh, if we're gonna keep trying to save these old bikes because they just, you know, it's very, uh, it's very hard to find anybody that wants to put out the, the capital and everything to, to sell just a few of these things. And I'm sure that uh, Dave sells quite a few of them over at KDI. Uh, I've bought some from him, and that's certainly the way to go. Uh, but Suzuki, I don't know of any. You're lucky to get a cover. So this is what you've got to do. And uh, it's not that hard. You just need a welder. You need 10 snips, uh, a cutoff wheel or whatever. Uh, you don't need fancy equipment. And, you know, like I said, the top portion is going to be covered by the foam and the cover. So you really don't even have to clean that up very well. It's just however you want the bottom uh, to be presentable. You know, whether you, whether you care about that or not, it's up to you. So, hey, thanks for going along on the ride. And we'll see you next video.